So, I found this Pinkie Pie at a thrift store. And this Pinkie Pie had what I'm going to call a non-traditional paint job. And she had, for reasons that I do not understand, because I do not follow pony lore, mismatched cutie marks. And she had the world's most amazing rat's nest of pink nylon hair. And I looked at this pony, and this pony, toy though she was, looked back at me, and I could tell in my soul that she wanted me to make her something different. So it did. I made her the nightmare of 2020, the Apocopony. Y'all gotta understand, this year has been terrible. And it hasn't just been terrible for the obvious reason. Don't worry, my videos aren't monetized. I'm gonna talk about the obvious reason. But we're gonna save that for the end. Because I really want to make sure that everybody has it firmly in their mind why the Apocopony is such an appropriate mascot for the year that we've had and why I felt compelled to create one for this video, which I will be releasing on New Year's Eve. Let's start at the very beginning. A very horrible, in this particular case, place to start. Who here remembers the Australia wildfires? Anybody? Anybody? No, probably not. Probably none of us remember the Australia wildfires because, sadly, tragically, they have been wiped from our minds by all the other suck that happened this year. But they happened, and they were terrible. Oh, and if you live in Australia, you probably still remember them because something somewhere near your home was on fire. It's an entire continent. How could the whole continent be on fire? But it was because that's just how 2020 rolls, and it wanted us to know that right out of the gate. How about murder hornets? Y'all remember murder hornets? In the wake of everything else that could possibly kill us that's happened this year, I'm not entirely sure why we got so worked up about small stinging insects that are relatively easily dealt with with raid. But we did, probably because we're all inherently just slightly afraid of bugs, which, you know, when you get right down to it, is reasonable because they're creepy and they have too many legs and, oh, apparently some of them murder you. So yeah, there was the murder hornets. None of us have forgotten about that. If you live in the United States of America, your president was impeached this year. Now, nothing really came of that, which might be why we immediately stopped talking about it. But I actually suspect that regardless of what side of the political divide you're on, having the president be impeached is a relatively big deal that would normally still be the talk of the town. It's just so much other stuff has happened. It's hard to care about that. I mean, honestly, I think murder hornets might have beaten that out, and we're not even getting into the deep stuff yet. The stock market crashed. Globally, the economy is not doing very well, but, you know, let's not forget that we here in America are particularly experiencing a problem, which also, you know, rolls right into the unemployment rate has doubled since 2019. I am not trying to be a downer, but, like, if you had two friends that were unemployed before, now you have four. And if you yourself were unemployed, the chances of you finding a job right now are terrible. Maybe I'll cut that out. That is really not a happy thought at all. We don't really need to delve more into the unhappy thoughts. Although we can't seem to escape them, can we? Because this is 2020. The year that the Apocopony is a perfect mascot for. We've had police brutality this year. Now, it seems pretty straightforward and, and logical to assume that we've always had police brutality. We're just catching a lot more of it on film. 
In response, there were the Black Lives Matter protests, which, given what they were protesting, seemed like relatively reasonable and contained things, which then led to further police brutality. And I've got to say, seeing police officers beat members of the community on film because the members of the community were saying, hey, how about y'all stop shooting us with impunity, was a real downer for me this year. God. The Beirut port exploded. This one I have to say I'm pretty excited about because my best building explosions were from movies like Die Hard. But it's way more fun when it happens in real life. And by fun, I do not at all mean fun. Chadwick Boseman died this year. While in general, I don't tend to dwell on the death of celebrities as highly impactful things, I think it's worth mentioning that Chadwick Boseman died because, first of all, he was 43 and he died of cancer, and that always sucks no matter who you are. But he was also battling cancer the whole time he was filming his role of Black Panther. And in a time when we are going through such heightened racial tensions, and those are at the forefront of the national consciousness, to have a symbol like the man who played the Black Panther die on you is just a kick in the teeth. In other notable deaths, we lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg this year, who was not necessarily a progressive, but a staunch holdout for decency and also, oh yeah, I don't know, following the actual Constitution. <sighs> not only is her loss sad, because, you know, she was pretty great, but also... There's the reality that our court is now stacked for oppression. So I'm pretty sad about it. We had a presidential election in the country where I live. And after the election was very plainly decided and the results were in, our current sitting president refused to acknowledge them, which is super weird, hasn't happened in my memory, and makes for not only instability, but kind of undermines democracy, which is just a freaky thing to have happen in one's lifetime. And then we come to the biggest shitstorm of all. COVID-19. That's right, friends and neighbors. This year, we had one of the famous 100-year viruses. They're famous because they happen about every hundred years. This one is going to go down as particularly infamous because while there were virologists warning that something like this was going to happen and while there was a team in place that was prepared to begin working on it immediately should such a virus happen, that team had been dismantled. And our nation in particular bungled the handling of the virus from the beginning. Which is why right now, while the rest of the world begins to slowly and carefully open back up, we are headed into what is likely to be our darkest months. COVID-19 has killed way, way, way too many of us. And it has kept us apart. It has kept us from celebrating with our loved ones in times of joy and it has kept us from being at the side of our friends and family when they are sick there is something incredibly cruel about a disease that brings such fear and then forces everyone to handle that fear on their own Twenty twenty has really sucked. And its effects are going to carry on for a really long time. It's right, I think, to use a metaphor for the apocalypse, no matter how cutesy that metaphor is, as our emblem of the year. 
When I call her the nightmare of 2020, I am not being dramatic. 2020 has been a nightmare. But the good news is the vaccine is out. And I think that's going to be the emblem of 2021. So here she is, the Apocopony, the nightmare of 2020, ready to gallop across the barren wasteland and hopefully gallop right the fuck out of here. Y'all have a happy new year, and may your coming year be better than this one has been. <laughs>